This about is like uh, you, you that uh, match saw that you're grinding like young hungry guy like college guys and like your logo is like this tiny cute star. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things we have updated him so at least now he's sort of 3D. Um, the face on the star is uh, after our founder Carl Karcher. He had little eyes and he had a very cute. It's almost cheesy, but it's something that's in our history. Uh, we have updated it since. Uh, let me show you a, a, an older logo. An older logo that um, a little flatter. Um, although this one we made really crazy by tilting it. Um, so <laughs> this is you know an older font that we used. Uh, we've since uh, made it more stylized in a script font um, and. The, the uh, Carl's Jr. star is sort of a 3D effect now. Um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things that we're identified by the star. And so now, if you watch the Rob Deer Deck video, you'll see that Happy Star might yet become a hip icon. Because in the viral video, Rob's wearing a Happy Star outfit. And um, he does tricks on a skateboard. You don't know it's him. And he gets into his little cool mini dirt bike thing. And he does a flip on his BMX into a foam pit. He does all these crazy things. Then he falls from a zip line, cracking his head on the sidewalk. And he takes off the, the um, Happy Star outfit. And then you see it's Rob Deerdeck. And he's like, dude, Happy Star just saved my life. <laughs> so he. He's really trying to, um, and this was all him. He submitted it to us. We did not say, here's the direction we want to go. He just was in love with the star. <laughs> so um, he even created a jingle for us. So um, he called Superstar. So he's, he's all about the star. How do you decide where to locate, you know, like in a city? I, I've seen, like, we have a Carlos Jr. very close to our house just down the road. And uh, I typically will often see fast foods like McDonald's, Burger King, and, and uh, Carlos Jr. all in kind of the same area. Mm -hmm. And is about, that does that work? It's yeah. all about traffic patterns. Our uh, real estate folks um, go out for site selection and see is this um, is this traffic pattern a consistent pattern? How many people go through this intersection yeah. every day? How many at the peak rush hours? Is there good ingress and egress? Can you get into the Other, if it's too saturated, we won't go there. If it's um, if we're the only one, we might not go there either. Uh, we don't want to be the ones that are the huge risk takers. Um, but something like Porterville, it was um, we were the only fast food restaurant there, and obviously it was a good idea because we yeah. made so much money. What what advertising media work the best for you? Uh, best bang for your buck is, is TV. TV. It's got the most. Um, it's got the most eyes, it's got the biggest reach, and it's the most expensive. Yeah. Um, we spend the majority of our advertising dollars on TV. Okay. Um, and we're seeing, though, that young, hungry guys don't watch TV all the time. Young, hungry guys are online. They're on their iPhone. They are texting friends. So we're trying to be where those young, hungry guys are now. And instead of saying, we're going to put all our eggs in the basket of TV. We're going to save up for the Super Bowl spot. How many of us have already watched Super Bowl ads on our computers? Because <laughs> they come out the week before now, and it's you want to get to be able to see them so you can go grab a beer during the commercial when it actually runs. So we're trying to adapt as we go. I'm curious, because he had such an ultra-conservative reputation. How did, how did Carl's Jr. transition to your current ad campaigns. I'm just wondering, you see like rolling over in the grave. He is dead. <laughs> so um, <laughs> uh, uh, Carl Carter died last year, January mm -hmm. 11th. So we just um, we just passed that one year anniversary of his death. Um, he was um, a bit taken aback by them, but our CEO was um, had actually started out as his personal attorney and was a good friend. And he, even though Carl said, I don't like these ads. I don't like Paris Hilton, you know, writhing around. Um, he understood what the marketing behind it was, and it it was exceedingly successful when because 
that that uh, commercial was five years ago. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, my CEO was on with Cavuto. He ran that just for you know giggles because everybody loves that ad. And Andy just sat there and he says, "Hey man, it's it's the commercial that keeps on getting. How can how can you go wrong with that?" So um, even though that's not you know wasn't the wholesome family atmosphere that that Carl's Jr. necessarily is founded on. It's what's working in this economy, it's what's working in this environment, and that's what um, is driving sales, because now we're not, we're not answering to our founder, we're answering to shareholders. And what shareholders want is profit. What other demographic groups have you considered? Um, our book calls it buyer persona, so I understand the kind of persona that you're targeting. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket? We do um, Hispanic media as well. We um, advertise um, specifically in the Hispanic markets because we've got a, a large um, Hispanic buying population. Um, especially how do you market to them is different. Sometimes we just repurpose the commercials and have them in Spanish. Sometimes they're subtitled, but sometimes we do unique commercials um, to the Hispanic market, one being with telenovelas, um, which are Mexican soap operas. So uh, the thing with telenovelas is guys watch these all the time. They won't admit it, but they do. It's the number one programming. So um, we have commercials and integration that says, Hey, I know you're a young, hungry guy. I know you you have a big appetite for for this kind of um, uh, the, the, the the telenovelas are, are a little steamier than than our normal uh, U.S. soap operas, and so how are you gonna um, you can tie that back into yeah, be a man, real men eat at Carl's Jr. So yeah, I know you're watching this telenovela. Don't tell me you're not, but okay, show me you're a real man and go eat at Carl's Jr. Market to kids. Um, kids are not in our demographic. Um, even though, yes, we have kids' meals, the only reason they're there is because somebody's got to feed these little munchkins that are running around. So um, uh, we, we, you know, grudgingly have that. Just like we have side salads and we've got you know, boneless, skinless chicken salads and other salads, but we don't sell a lot of them. Burgers. But your burger is wrapped in lettuce instead of the bun. Right, the low carb one. Yeah. We do have that. Um, in fact, it really helps that our CEO, who again is 58 years old, is extremely fit. He works out, he runs, he um, has a personal trainer, and he eats our burgers about four or five times a week. So um, to show him as he's the example of, look, I eat fast food all the time. I eat my own fast food, and this is the body I get because I make healthy choices. If he wants, um, if he already had a burger, um, maybe he was in a burger tasting, he can go and have a boneless, skinless um, chicken sandwich. He uh, was very big in the Atkins stuff, and so we were the first um, uh, major brand that offered low-carb uh, burgers by wrapping it in whole leaf lettuce. So it's, um, you know, we'll tweak it for, as we see that, yes, there is a market for it. The reason that you don't see a commercial for our charbroiled chicken sandwich or our salads, yeah, they don't sell. So we only advertise our, our big money makers, and those are our big burgers.